I'm going to get started. Again, Kyle, AA0Z, thanks for attending. It's about Node Red and custom dashboards and control interfaces for your shack. This is relatively new stuff. Um, we're going to get into the, some of the history of Node Red, but it wasn't meant for ham radio. It was meant for the Internet of Things, and we have adopted it to ham radio stuff. It was invented by IBM a long time ago. Uh, Nick O'Leary over in uh, Ireland does a lot of the development. He's got a Node Red channel that is just dedicated to development, so if you're a developer nerd, you can go out there and, and take a look. I am recording this. The ARRL is recording this. I'm sure other people are recording this. This is going to be on my YouTube channel on Monday, hopefully. So if you, I'm going to record it, right? Put it on YouTube. So if you miss something, either you can do two things. You can go to my YouTube channel, AA0Z, and take a look at the, um, uh, the presentation. Or you can email me. I'm good on QRZ, and I'll answer any questions that you got. Um, but I'm going to show you some other resources that we can get into. All right, so kind of covered this a little bit. What is Node Red? Developed by IBM. Uh, I think 3.2 is the latest version, but you want to be on version th uh, 3 if you install this. Built on Node.js. Don't let that scare you. It's not, this is not, a, I am not a programmer. And if I can program this and automate my shack, you can too. I am not a programmer. That's what I did not go. I did not go to school for programming. It's web-based. It runs on your computer. It runs on Windows. It runs on a Raspberry Pi. It runs on an Arduino. It runs on um, Linux. It runs on a Mac. Basically, anything that you can boot up, it can probably be installed on. And the nice thing about Node Red is it hides all the boilerplate code. So back in the day, I'm assuming, don't quote me on this, I'm assuming if you wanted to like connect, some, connect something to a TCP port, you had to do all of this code to do all of that, the, the, the back end programming. Node Red hides all of that stuff, and it's one node. And you configure that one node with like two parameters, and you've got a, a TCP connection to whatever device you want. It's really easy. Here is a sample flow of what a flow looks like. So a flow is the, the building blocks of Node Red, and then here's like a, a dashboard. We're going to take a look at some more of these, uh, these dashboards. So again, I'm not a programmer. If I can do this, you can do this too. It's easy. Plus, there are, out on our group's I.O., there are hundreds and hundreds of pre-built flows already, probably for your radio, your flex, your Alicraft, your Kenwood, your Icons, they're already built. All you have to do is install them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But uh, if you've got some basic logic, you know, like A equals B, B equals A, all right, then A plus B equals, equals C. If you can do that logic in your head, you can program. It's very easy. All right, so you're probably saying, all right, that's great, but what can it control? Basically, anything that's got an input, an Ethernet, a serial, or a USB, right? Most radios can be adopted to, to connect to Hamlib, and then it connects to your radio. The Flex, pr pretty much the Flex and the Elecraft have seamless integration. There's actually a, uh, somebody's phone's ringing. There's, um, there is a, a, a guy who has made some flex specific nodes that connect directly to your flex automatically. It's great. You just drag them over, you can configure them, and they're, they're up and, and, and going. What else it can, can uh, control is amplifiers, tuners, rotators, antenna switches, relays, disconnects. So basically, anything that is in your shack, you can control via Node Red. All right, why use Node Red? So I get this question a lot on, well, why should I install this? What, what's the, what's the, the meaningful use here? So automation, right? How many are contesters? How many like to contest? Yeah, quite a few of you. Have you ever been 
run at CQ Worldwide or ready at 3 o'clock in the morning and you tune your, your, uh, your radio to 40 meters and your amplifier's on 80 and your antenna switch is on the wrong antenna, I have. You can do that one click. So whenever you tune your, your, um, uh, your radio to 40 meters, you click the 40 meter band, everything switches automatically. You don't even have to touch a thing. That's, what, that's how I use it. I also use it to turn, I have a remote station in southern Missouri, and I turn everything on and off, and I monitor the whole remote station through Node Red. I bring up my Flex, I have my Flex and my Node Red uh, web page, and it runs, you know, so I got a Raspberry Pi, it installs, I installed Node Red, I installed the flows to monitor everything, and on this side I've got my Flex. And on this side, I've got my node red, and it's monitoring my whole station that is about an hour and a half away from my house. I live in the city of St. Louis. My contest station is in southern Missouri up on a mountaintop, and I contest from there. It's really cool. Um, and then real-time feedback, right? So like the PGXL, it can tell you the fan speed. Your flex can tell you the fan speed. You can get real-time information how hot your Elecraft um, AMP is running. You can, t you can get all of that information in real time versus getting a, you know, I, I don't know anything about Alicraft AMPs, but you know, I, I'm sure that there's probably, maybe there's a LED that shows you that it's overheating. I don't know. But you can see the temperature rising before you get to a certain point. Same thing with um, uh, the 6600, the 6700, the, the, uh, the flex line, the 6000 line. You can see the fan speed, you can see the temperature, you can see the voltage coming in, you can see, you can monitor all that stuff in real time. And then also, the, the nice thing I like about Node-RED is um, the command and control, but the custom alarms, right? So again, three o'clock in the morning, you're running a contest and something goes wrong with your antenna and your SWR goes to, you know, 2.5 to one. You can make an alarm to literally alert you to say, hey, something's going on with your antenna, take a look at it. We've also done a lot with blind hams, with audio, audible alarms on SWR and power and other stuff that it can announce the things that your radio is doing. So blind hams like a, lo uh, a lot of the stuff in node Red. So how does this all connect? So you've got your USB serial Ethernet bus, right? Things come in via the, the USB port on your Raspberry Pi. Maybe um, you've got a serial to FIDI device that you're gonna plug into USB. Maybe you've got something that is Ethernet that plugs into your network. You know, a Raspberry Pi has got Ethernet. So all of these things can be controlled by, by Node Red. Um, I wanna point out a few things that are very valuable, because I'm assuming that most of you can probably figure most of this out, but this Paradan antenna switch disconnect, it's over in building, the north-south building. That switch, you apply power to it, and it connects your antenna, right? You, you disable power to it, remove power to it, and it unconnects your antenna. So where do I use that? I use that in the contest station when lightning is, um, I've got an indicator that says whenever lightning is 50 miles away, automatically disconnect my antenna at my remote switch because I'm not watching the weather at my remote location all the time. And I leave my flex on 24 seven. So that is my, and I also get an alert, it sends me an email in a text to say, hey, I disconnected your antenna because there's lightning 50 miles away. It's all automatic. I don't have to do a thing. So I use that um, in my Node Red station. I also use this, it's called a Digital Loggers Web Pro. And basically what it does is it is a eight or six port AC relay that plugs into Ethernet. It's about $180 and you can control it through Node Red. So anything that you plug in to, it's got six AC plugs and it's got two that are always on. So anything that you plug into the AC ports, you can turn on and off remotely 
through Node-RED. So that's how I, I turn the power on and off at my remote station. And then we've got some other things. This uh, KM Tronics relay is pretty cool. It's got to, it takes a 12 volt in. It's just uh, normal, <coughs> normally open, normally closed. Um, and it's got eight relays. It's controlled by Ethernet. Um, EA4, EA4TX boxes are, are rotator controllers at the station. They're fully automatable. They plug into USB. I plug them directly in the Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to show you some examples of uh, uh, azimuth um, maps. And basically, you click on where you want your, your antenna to point, and your rotator points to it, or your antenna points to it. So here's some dashboard examples. I know this is hard to see. So hopefully, whenever I put this out on, on YouTube, the resolution will, will be a bit better. But, bit better, but um, you've got, um, so these are buttons that you can actually click. Here's some gauges. Here's some LED lights. Um, here's some toggle switches. So this is the toggle switch that uh, turns the power on and off to one of those web DL log uh, loggers pro. Um, again, some more buttons. So all of these are are um, values that you read into Node Red, and it um, it displays it on the dashboard. And this is web based, right? This is a web page that you run. So you install Node Red on a Raspberry Pi, and then on your computer, you bring up the web page of Node Red, and that's how you get everything out of Node Red. And it runs its own web server on whatever device you install it on. Here's another. I call this one the fruity pebbles of, of Node Red. So you can see all the buttons and uh, values that are going on, the gauges up there. Uh, this one is uh, Mike Walker, uh, VA3MW from Flex Radio. <coughs> That's his dashboard. This one is Dave, WO2X's dashboard. So I talked about that rotator controller. That's that. So you make a map of where your center point is, where your location is. You import it into Node-RED, and then this becomes a clickable, clickable map. So if I want to run, uh, work you know, Brazil, I just click on Brazil, and my rotator rotates. And you can see he's got, um, <clears throat> he's got uh, presets here, so he can, you know, JA, EU, Caribbean, Oceania, um, and then here's gauges, and then obviously there's Flex Radio down here. Here's a two tower setup. And you can, you can go out on the internet and make those, those maps and you can customize them. Here's another one, uh, VK100. And you can also, for you that have more programming skills, all of this is, is uh, you can put a CSS style sheet on it and make all your buttons and, and um, uh, your web pages look nice and neat. Here's some other things that are kind of ham radio related, but uh, here is a um, propagation map that I pull in. Here is a uh, gray line. Here is a weather widget. Here, I built for my state QSO party, I bring in all of the spots of all the clusters and all of the, um, uh, the local spotting networks, and I aggregate them into one master cluster, and I used a Telnet session, and I, I serve it up via Telnet, and then we all connect into that Telnet session, and it's an aggregator for all the clusters. And I've got some logic back in here that searches for Missouri stations. And then here's a POTA map. So there wasn't a lot of POTA going on, but it's, it, it maps all of the POTA locations that are active and, and actively spotted on the, um, on the bands. And then I also built a um, N1MM contest dashboard. And this is, this first 
screen right here is basically an overview of if you're like in a multi-single, multi-multi, multi-two, it, uh, it does radio information, it maps your latest QSO, it does graphs of how you're doing, your Q rate, um, and it's, it's a great way of not only seeing where your QSOs are being, you, you know, you're, being, uh, you're contacting, but also we've used it like in, in field day to really show people that come from the outside actually where you're, you're making QSOs uh, from. Um, but it's also great in a in a multi multi contest, and you've got many people that are you know in the kitchen, living room, and they don't know what's going on with the contest. We pull up one of the one of the, my dashboards, and people can follow along in another room how the contest is going. So, and I also up here I pair uh, I make a contest within a contest. I pair the the uh, other mult or the other uh, ops against one another. So you know. Like uh, WV4P up there is in the lead, well VE5MX is in the second, well maybe he just, uh, WV4P you know, got done running, well now the other guy says that he's in second place, well I'm gonna get on the radio, I'm gonna try and beat him. So I try and make it a contest within a contest. And then I've got some uh, online scoreboard integration where you can pull your friends and uh, chase your friends. So that's what, some of the stuff that I've been working on. So here is an example. Remember this guy? This is that Digital Loggers Pro. Here's the flow that you can download off the internet. And here's the dashboard that comes with that flow. So you buy this, you put an IP address on this, and then you download that for free off the internet. I'm gonna show you where. And then it displays this and you can you know, customize your different ports there, and then you've got, you're up and running with, a, with a, um, an AC switch that's got six ports, you can turn things on and off. Another first device that I, I might suggest is this KM Tronics relay. It's got, that eight, it's got eight relays, and then here's the flow that you download off the internet. Somebody has already done the work for you, and then you can assign, um, I've uh, used it to turn my flex on and off, and then also to, to hit the PTT button. So I've put one of these um, in a state where, you know, whatever the flex, if it's got a, a thing in the back, it's got an RCA jack in the back. You close that RCA jack, the flex turns on, right? You open that, that contact, the flex turns off. So I just wired this into this, one of these relays, and I click the button here, my flex turns on. And then whenever I want to turn it off, I click this button, and it, and it turns, it's, it's off now. Whenever it turns on, it turns green. And then I, to turn it off, I click it again, and the contact's open, and my flux turns off. And this thing runs on 12 volts, so it's got a terminal, terminal strip back there. You can also monitor your Raspberry Pi, so there's some flows. That, uh, that you can monitor CPU temperature, memory, disk space. You can chart stuff. You can reboot and uh, shut down your, uh, your Pi. So we've also integrated Node-RED in with the Stream Deck. If you've got a Stream, if you don't know what a Stream Deck is, a Stream Deck is basically a, it's, a, it's this device that all of these buttons are automatable. Well, I'm sorry. They're LEDs. So they're little bitty television screens. And you can push any, any uh, uh, picture or, or icon you want to them. And these are huge in the gaming world. Like, go ask your 17-year-old your son or daughter who games. They know what a Stream Deck is, right? We have now integrated this into, into the ham radio world. And now, instead of pushing a button on your, on your computer screen, you're pushing a button on the Stream Deck and it's doing 10 different things, right? You press a button and it turns your rotator, it tunes you to 40, 40 meters, it tunes your amp and selects an antenna. You can do that all with a single button press. And you can get them in different, different versions, six and 15 and 24 button. But that's called a Stream Deck. 
here's some of the examples that people have done. So here, uh, probably can't see that, but up there is a 6600 and a K4D, so you can switch between radios, you can turn things on and off. Um, here's one button to configure your radio for FT8. So all of the, th think of all the things you do to configure your, your shack to, to run FT8. Wouldn't it be great if you just had one button and then you just click it and everything gets configured automatically? It'd be awesome. So whenever Dave sent me this, uh, Dave WO2X, whenever he hits this FT8 button, this is the screen that pops up. So you can have screens within screens within screens. It's endless, right? So this screen pops up and then he can you know, go to 80, 40, 30. He can select his slice. Um, you can make sure that he's on uh, upper, upper sideband or DigiU. And then every sub-screen has got a back button that takes you back to, to the main screen. The Stream Deck is really cool. If you, if you want to take a look at that, send me a note and, um, and I can get you started on it. So we talked about the things that you can do with, with Node-RED, and I think you probably get a good notion of what, what you can do. Now I'm going to get into like the nuts and bolts of how to, how to do this. Could be a little dry, so I'm, I'm warning you now. So the easiest thing to do right now is, and I understand that pies are, are hard to come by, but if you can get literally a Pi 2 or above, I run some of my nodes on a Raspberry Pi Zero, you know, those little bitty boards that uh, you could get like at Micro Center for $5. I've got a couple of my Node Red instances running on a Pi Zero. So the easiest thing for you to do to get this up and running is to get a Raspberry Pi. That's the easiest thing to do. The nice thing about getting a Raspberry Pi and installing it there is it's one script, right? You go to the Node-RED website, you type this or you copy this uh, uh, bash script into your command prompt and it just it installs. You don't have to do anything else. It just does it. You can install Node-RED on Windows. Um, it's a little tougher, but you can get it installed. Um, the one, I don't, I don't run, I, I run Windows, but I don't run Node-RED on Windows. The one thing that I would suggest if you do run Node-RED on Windows is it's going to pull up a DOS, a DOS prompt. Do not close that prompt. If you close that prompt, it will shut down Node-RED. So make sure that your DOS prompt is always up and running for Node-RED to, uh, to continue to run. There's two screens in Node-RED. There's the workspace where you do all your programming, and then there's the dashboard. Take note of the address, okay? So whenever you, um, so localhost would be if you install it on your Windows machine. Let's say your Raspberry Pi has got a 192.168.1.2 address, right? So you would go to, to get into your workspace to load a flow, you would go to 192.168.1.2 colon slash 1880. It all runs on port 1880, okay? That will get you into this screen. This is where you can configure your nodes. This is where you do all your programming. This is your dashboard. This is you know, the, the business end that you want to look at. That is, again, 192.168.1.2, whatever the IP is of your Raspberry Pi, colon 1880 forward slash UI. We get so many questions on Where's my dashboard? I don't understand where my dashboard is. It's at slash UI. So if you remember that, you're golden. Also, 
the first thing you want to do, you install the dashboard node to display the flows on the dashboard. These, these um, dashboard nodes don't come by default. I'm going to show you how to install custom nodes in your, your, your workspace. The first thing you want to do, if you want to take a note, install the dashboard node. That's the first thing that you want to do after you get this up and running. Okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's talk about the, the workspace screen. So you've got your tabs up here. You've got your palettes. These are your nodes. Okay? That's your palette. You've got the main workspace. And you've got this sidebar over here that has a bunch of stuff. For all you programmers out there, your compile button is this red button up there. So after you get to a point where you want to compile your flows, you click the big red button. It's called the deploy button. Okay? And then you've got this sidebar up here that we're going to talk about. But again, this screen is at the address of your node red install, colon 1880. Okay? Two types of nodes that you need to be aware about. Function nodes. These are all of the nodes that do some work to get some data, to move data along, to pull your Kenwood, to pull your ICOM radio, right? These are the nodes that actually work for you. These dashboard nodes are what display that, those values on your dashboard. Okay? We get a lot of questions in the groups I.O. on, hey, I installed this flow, but I don't know where, I don't know where the things are at, the, the, the dashboard things. You know? they, don't, they don't know what to, to call them. So they, you know, the, the dashboard stuff is not visible. Where, are, where is it? Take a look at these teal colored. So every flow probably ends at the end, left to right, with a dashboard note. Right? So you got to get all that data that you're collecting out of your radio, and then you pipe it into a dashboard node, and that's how you display it on the dashboard. So if you've got a gauge, right? you've got a gauge that goes 1 to, one to 100, right? and it's, your, it's, a, it's a, a power, let's say a power gauge. And the value coming through that flow that it, it um, is getting from the amp, let's say, is 50. Well, it's going to send 50, the value 50, to one of these nodes, and it's going to be called, let's say, a gauge, which is the, uh, the gauge dashboard node right there. So it's going to come in as 50. Well, you've got to make sure that the value that is coming in is a numerical value, right? It's in range of what you configure your gauge to be. And then if all of those parameters are met, then it displays it on the dashboard. And each one of these nodes, I'm going to show you, have different parameters. So this is, this is a perfect example of the parameters on your, your function nodes. So an inject node. An inject node is what starts a flow. Probably think, well, how do I, how do I like pull my my amp, or how do I pull my radio? You inject something into it. You can e either inject a timestamp, you can inject a value, you just need to inject something to get that flow started, okay? And this has a, a repeat. So let's say you wanna pull your, your K3 every three seconds. Well, you'd put it on repeat every three seconds. I'm gonna inject and I'm gonna start that flow and I'm going to get a new value out of my, my amp or out of my, my radio. And it's going to go through the flow, and then it's going to display on a dashboard. Right? So that's how you get values in and out of, out of your, um, uh, your devices. Debug nodes. Debug nodes are your friends. So you can, as you remember, I've got these flows right, that go from left to right. You can place, connect debug nodes into those flows and figure out what values are coming halfway through, three-fourths of the way through, out of all of, all of the different nodes, you can 
see what those nodes are producing and what it's sending to the next node, right? So debug nodes are your friend. A switch, a switch node is a typical node that you're gonna find in node red, and it's a big if then else, right? If this, go there. If that, go there. If anything, you know, nothing else, go over here. And that's where this is, like in this example, I'm getting the mode. So if the mode is, you know, CW, it goes out that, uh, let's see, yeah, it goes out that top one. If the mode is FT8, it goes out the second one. If, the, if it's FT4, it goes out this third, this third output. And you can have multiple outputs on a node, right? And that's how you connect them together, connect them through the, the um, lines, or called wires, they're called wires. And then we've got a change node here. So maybe you want to change a value you know, from a, a text value. Maybe you get a value of 50 out of your flex radio and you need to change it to a number. You can do that very easily through the change node. So those are just four nodes, four, four basic nodes that you're going to see in node red whenever you start it up. And, and if you load a flow that's already configured for you, and you start poking around, you're probably going to see these nodes that are already in the flow. So I talked about the dashboard nodes, right? Those are those teal colored nodes. Here's three examples. We've got a text node over here. You can see that it says the current database is QRZ. So if these are the parameters that you can configure for labels, how you want your, your values to be displayed, what your color of your, your uh, graph is, how big you want it to be, that's where you can, you can configure. And every single node has got one of these parameters that you can, can configure. Here's a button, right, submit, cancel. Here's a gauge that goes to, you can't see that, it goes to one to 100. Here's the active spots, and you can see where, you know, if it's below, uh, let's say, 25, it's green. If it's between 26 and 75, it's, it's yellow, and then above 76, it's red. Yeah, go ahead. Are there any templates you can download from GitHub and you can get in somewhere and just Yeah, I, we've got a whole, yeah, uh, groups I.O of all of the flows, and I'm gonna show you where you can download them off of our, our groups I.O. There's hundreds of flows already built for you. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but this is, this is how flows get, go from left to right. So remember we've had that inject flow. So this is injecting, uh, run every second, get the band and mode, and it's gonna come and it runs, like I said, left to right, and then here is a decision. It's gonna break out the band and the mode data from my radio, so I'm getting my radio data, it's gonna come into this node, it's gonna say, hey, what is the mode? What's the band and the mode? And the mode is gonna come up here, and the, the, the band is gonna come down here, and these, these two are going to run simultaneously, and it's gonna say, hey, is my mode SSB, CW, or digital? And if it is, it's gonna break it out to SSB, CW, and digital, and then it's gonna display the, no, the mode in, looks like that's a text box, in, a, in the dashboard. Same down here. So it's gonna, the, the value that I'm probably getting out of my radio is probably two values. It's probably like the mode and uh, the band. So the mode is you know, probably a text file that says CW and the band is, you know, let's say it says 20 meters. So actually it's gonna come in here and then it's gonna break out that mode CW text. It's gonna say, hey, do I see CW there? And if it does, it's gonna bring it up here the band is gonna come down here. These are gonna, like I said, run parallel, and then I'm gonna display the mode in this dashboard node, and I'm gonna display the band in that dashboard mode. Does that make sense? 
And these are just text values that you're getting out of your radio. And they've got a payload. It's called a payload. And all you have to do is figure out what that payload is trying to tell you and then push it to the next node to do some more work on it, right? Get it to the, to the value that you, want, that you want. I talked about debugging flows. Debug is your, is your friends. If you don't know what's going on, put a debug node and turn it on on every single one of your nodes. The way that you turn it on, this is another question that we get quite a bit. The way that you turn it on is you hit the green button. This is a node, a debug node that's turned on. This one is turned off, okay? Also, you notice that there's these blue dots that are above these nodes. That means I have put those nodes, I've dragged them over and put them on my workspace, but I haven't hit the deploy button yet. Okay, so if you see blue dots above your, your nodes, you know that you gotta hit the deploy button to actually make those nodes active. Another screen here of where to start, nodered.org. So if you go to nodered.org, they've got a ton of information forums, um, documentation. Actually, the documentation is great. Like if you are a basic programmer or not a programmer at all and you want to learn about um, uh, JSON code and payloads and how to, how to uh, put basic flows together, this is the, the, the place to start. This is, it's got great documentation. And the forums are also very helpful. Granted, keep in mind, the forums are not ham radio related. If you've got a general question about Node-RED, these guys are great. But if you've got a specific question about um, ham radio, I'm going to show you another place to go. And then also, real quick, this sidebar menu, it's got a bunch of icons that are up. Remember that deploy button, right? Up here is a bunch of icons. Project info, if you enable projects and you want to push this to GitHub, you can enable that. It's got a help. <coughs> so every, every node has got a help feature. So you can click on a node and then click on the help and it will tell you what the parameters are, what it's looking for, what its input is, what its output is, and then probably give a web page that you can go and get some more information. I use that every single day on trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong or, or what, what, get some more information about a node. Um, we've got the GitHub repository, so if you, if you like to develop and you wanna download a flow and then push it back up to GitHub, that is, that's there. Here's your de debug sidebar. So remember, I was clicking on those, those debug nodes and enabling them, right? Well, you gotta find, you gotta find that debug information somewhere. You click on the debug sidebar, a new sidebar appears with all your debug information in it, okay? And then the dashboard. We're gonna get into the dashboard here. It's 2.23. We're gonna get into the dashboard on how you manipulate the dashboard because you're probably thinking, all right, I'm putting all of this stuff in dashboard nodes, but I wanna like, you know, how do I move stuff around? I'm gonna show you that. So you configure your dashboard in this dashboard node I'm sorry, this dashboard sidebar, and then uh, here are some settings, and then uh, for you advanced programmers, if you've got local flow or global variables, that's where you take a look at your, your global variables. That's an advanced topic, we're not gonna get into that. All right, here's the first thing you do after you get Node-RED up and running. So. Remember I had the deploy button up here, right? And there's that hamburger menu that's next to the deploy button. Click that hamburger menu. It's gonna make a drop down, okay? The first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to manage palette. That is where all of your nodes are. That's your palette of nodes, okay? The first thing you're gonna do is install, you're gonna search for dashboard. 
You want to install your dashboard nodes. That's your default nodes, okay? If you go out on the internet and you see something cool something somebody did and you import their flow and they have some custom nodes that you don't have installed on your dashboard, this is where you install them, okay? So here, I did an example, went to Manage Palette, this screen shows up, and I just typed in the word Morse code, okay? And there's, somebody made a Morse code node that I don't know what it does, I have no, have no idea what it does. But if I wanted to install, let's say I, uh, my buddy sent me a flow, and he said, oh, you gotta install the Morse code node before you do this, I would go to my hamburger menu, come down to Manage Palette, this screen would pop up. In the search, under the Install tab, I type in Morse code, and I'd hit the Install button, and it would automatically install that node into my palette. And then my flow, then I would, then I would hit the Deploy button, and my flow would start running. Does that make sense? So the first thing you do after you get node run, up and running is an install the dashboard nodes. Okay, search for dashboard. It's gonna come up, it's gonna install like 13 or 16 nodes. That's gonna get you up and running. That's the first thing you do. Then, the second thing you do is you go out to the groups IO, which is I'm gonna show you, and you install a sample node or a sample flow. The way you do that is, again, your dashboard, your hamburger menu, and you go to import. That's where you're gonna import custom flows, okay? This screen is gonna pop up. So whenever you go out to the groups IO, you're gonna download that flow. It's gonna be a JSON file. So it's gonna be a, dex, a text file. You're gonna save it on your computer. Then you're gonna go into the import, and you're gonna, you're gonna uh, take a, or you're gonna find that JSON file, you're gonna import it, and it's gonna import directly into your, into your Node-RED system. A few notes about tabs and groups. So tabs, there's a hierarchy in dashboard, in the dashboard, okay? You've got tabs, that are the highest level, and then you've got groups, and then you've got dashboard nodes that go into the groups. So you've got the nodes that go into the groups, the groups go into tabs, okay? So to add a new tab, you click over here. So remember that sidebar up there, we've got, we're, we're in the dashboard sidebar, okay? This is the default view that's gonna pop up. You're gonna add that you want to add a tab, you click on the tab button. It's going to add a new tab. You want to add a new, add a new group inside your tab. And let me preference this. Let me get, yeah. So you can add a new group inside a tab by clicking the new group button, and you can rename it, OK? This layout button is going to be key because it's going to give you a GUI interface to your Node-RED dashboard. I'm going to show you, show you that in a minute. So let's take a look at this default dashboard. So this is like your, your main dashboard here, right? E-layer command and control. E-layer command and control. See where that corresponds? And then... These are different tabs, Radio B Shack Control, DX Cluster, FR Stack, Slices, Camera Feed. Those, all of those tabs are under that hamburger menu. So you click on that hamburger menu and all of these tabs fill in. These are your tabs. You can take a look, Raspberry Pi, Status, Power Switch, Flex Power. Guess what, those are groups. What are these, Raspberry Pi Control, Flex Power, uh, Power switch, flex power, solar data, solar data, solar data. These are dashboard nodes inside of this group, inside of the E-layer command and control, which is on that dashboard. Is it coming together? Yep. It's a hierarchy. It's a hierarchy. Can you test the node before you publish it into the dashboard? 
Uh, no. No, you have to deploy it. Yep. And if it's going to air out, you got to let it air out. Yep. Yep. But it'll tell you where it's coming from. Oh, yeah. If that, so if, if you've got some values coming in and that, that node does not like those values, it's going to turn red. It will show up, so the, the only way that it's going to show up if it's, a, if it's an error is if you put a debug node on it, and it's going to show up in the debug sidebar. So the question is, where, where are things going to show up if, an, if a node airs out? It's going to show up in the debug, but you have to put a debug, you have to attach a debug node to that. So as you get more experience, you'll figure out, I think it's right there. I think that's, I think that's the node that's that's flaking out on me. And then you put a debug node on that, and sure enough, it's going to fill up your debug statement to say, you know, um, value is string, and it's expecting a Boolean. Right? So let's go back real quick. Remember I, s I said this layout right here? So each tab is going to have a layout button. Whenever you click that button, it's going to bring up a GUI. So now, all of your groups, remember we had that Raspberry Pi group, we had that Power Switch group, we had that Flex group. All of these groups are now, these are your actual dashboard nodes that are rearranged on your screen. Now you can drag and drop them to however big you want them, and all of this this length, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. There's, you just tell it how big you want it to be and it will resize all that stuff accordingly. Let's say you want, to, you saw, you want one of your gauges to be half your screen, you can do it. You just make, all the way across is 48 units. So you just make that, you know, whatever, I don't do math on camera. Uh, yeah, 20, <laughs> thank you. Um, you just make it half, half the, uh, the, the, the width of your screen. That's the first rule of YouTubing. You don't, you don't do math on camera. All right, real quick. This is a dashboard group, Raspberry Pi, command and control, and uh, an e uh, a weather widget that I created. So you, I'm going to pair all this stuff up. Here's a gauge, there's a gauge. Those correspond to this. Here's another gauge, here's another gauge. They correspond to this. Here's a chart, here's the chart. Reboot button, reboot button, shut down, shut down. See how it all comes in line here? Same thing with this wind direction. Here's the 360 gauge, outside temp. It's a chart, it's a chart. An LED, weather LED. Shut down if thunder, should be say shut down if lightning. This is where I can turn my lightning detection on and off to say, hey, lightning is within 50 miles of the contest station, shut everything down. Yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with the Yeah, I am. Um, no, this integrates, there's a, there's a node that you can install from the internet and I think it's um, open, open weather map, yeah, and it's got an API, and you just sign up for an account, and then you give, you give the, uh, the node your account information, and it goes out and pulls your zip code every five minutes. Yep. There's also, the, we talked about the rotator. This is done through SVG elements, so all of those things are clickable, right? So if you want to find or get some more information about the SVG elements, that's how the rotators, the clickable azimuth map is created. Uh, I sound like a broken record. First thing you want to do is, is um, install your dashboard node. This is what it's called. This is what it looks like. Node red dashboard. Again, I can't stress how many questions I field on, this is not working. Have you installed your dashboard node? I know. 
I don't, I don't know why. I don't. All right, some resources. Nodered.org, we talked about those. Here's the, the Noderd YouTube page. It's another good one. It's very, very technical though. This Opto video is really good. This is um, some type of automation, control all automation in a manufacturing space. And he breaks down different flows and how to do different things. It's really good. He, he's a great teacher. The YouTube videos are made really well. If you want to know more advanced stuff about Node-RED, go check this out. And then there's Node-RED on Reddit. Kind of hang out there. Sometimes it gets a little political. Um, and then this is the holy grail right here. This is where you want to hang out. The groups, the groups I owe, Node Red for Ham Radio. That's where it's got 1,800 people in it. This is where we're all hanging out and talking about Node Red and Ham Radio. I mean, there's probably a dozen posts a day about Node Red, and you can, I subscribe to the Digest because it gets a little bit much. But if you want to know, you have a question about a flow, you have a question about your radio, your amplifier, how do you get information in and out of it, and somebody has not already made a flow for it, this is where you ask it. There are, <coughs> there are three or four people that hang out on the groups IO daily, and if I guarantee you, if you get to a point where you are totally stuck, I guarantee you one of them will give you a call on the, cell, on the, on the phone and they'll do a Zoom call and they'll get you up and running. Dave and uh, Alan and um, uh, Ron, I could go on and on. Those guys are absolutely amazing. They got more time than I do, but they will literally get into your system and are not getting, but they will help you along and they will get you up and running. I guarantee it. I, I have yet to see them say no. Your pre-programmed flows, somebody had a question about it. Here it is. So once you join the group's I.O., you go to files. And here are all of the pre-programmed flows. They're ordered by type, so radio, amplifier, rotator, antenna switch, and then they're ordered by manufacturer. So if you're looking for a, uh, a flow for a six by two, a six pack, uh, six by two antenna switch, it's there. You're looking for a, uh, uh, an expert linear amplifier flow, it's there. Actually, somebody's got a 7300 flow. Yeah, they've, they've figured out the CIV and they brought it into Node Red. Yep. I think it takes some doing though, but the 7300 is a, is a little tough, but I think somebody cracked it. Yep. Here's all the pre-programmed flows that you can get. So anything by Elecraft, anything by Flex, automatically works. Just out of the box. You can. What is that? Yeah, KX2 and 3. Yeah, because re remember the KX2 and the KX3 have the same, the same uh, code set as the K3. It's all the same code set. Yep. The, the RF kits, they just integrated the RF kits amplifier, and one of my friend uh, bought one of those. Seamless. He worked um, uh, AR already. Uh, no, 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 not AR already, because that's only 100 watts. Um, forgot what contest. All remotes through um, his Yesu at home and an RF kits amplifier had no issues whatsoever. I'm gonna say one thing about securing Node Red. There is something you can do to secure Node Red. So if you're thinking about running this remote, you can. But 
what I would do is I would not trust the security on Node-RED. Okay? Whenever you install Node-RED by default, there is no security. Right? If you can get to that web page, you can get into your Node-RED flow and change it. Right? So if you expose port 1880 to the internet, guess what? Everyone in Ameri America, everyone in the world can get into your Node-RED flows. Don't do that. I've seen this time and time again, and they let, well, I'm just gonna, nobody knows that I'm running Node-RED. It's, it's, it's security by obscurity, right? Please don't do that. Right, they're just looking for open ports. Go and take a look at your router logs if, if, you, can, if you can get them to figure out who's scanning for what. So when you build your flow, yep. you have your dashboard and the button and things, those aren't a separate kind of just web page of those kind of things. They are part of your operating and your workflow. Yeah, so whenever you, remember, whenever you create your flow and all of your data flows into those dashboard nodes, that is found at your IP address of wherever your, your Node-RED install, colon 1880 forward slash UI. Okay. Yeah. So if you have multiple dashboards, different things to do different stuff, yep. they're all in that same URL? Yes, so yes. The yeah, so what I would do is if you've got different, let's say you have 20 different flows, you can put all of those flows in different tabs and in different groups, and then, and then that hamburger menu on the left-hand side, you can click that hamburger menu, and then all of those tabs, that hierarchy, will show up, and you can have different pages that have different things on the dashboard. But no username and password. No username and password. Well, secure, securing node red, you can do a username and password, but I will not trust this. The, the programmers of Node-RED have come out and said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this. What you can do is you can use a VPN like Tailscale or Hamachi or something along those lines. What I do is I run an SSH server on my Pi and then I do what's called port forwarding. So I, I SSH into my Pi and I port forward port 1880 and then I'm here, let's say I'm here at the show and I want to get into my, my remote station. I would SSH into my Pi, port forward port 880, and then on my laptop here, I would get into localhost port 1880, and it would send that connection over to my, 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 uh, my Node-RED server. Yeah, that's how I do it. We're going to skip this. All right. Again, I'm going to plug my web page. I've done probably, I don't know, 20 videos on Node-RED on how to get up and running. If, you're, if you sat in this, 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 uh, the audience and you fell asleep and you're like, I, don't, I, I want to do this, but I, I have no idea what you're doing, that first video, it literally like, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is what it looks like. And the, here's how you plug it in. I start there and I get an image on the Pi I install Node-RED, we go over to the group's I.O., we install a flow, a, a, a sample flow, we deploy it, we get into the dashboard, we manipulate some things on the dashboard, and then you're off to the races. So if you want to have, you know, if you take one takeaway from this on, I want to do this, but it's over my head, go right here. I've got it all spelled out for you. Uh, that's not going to play. That's it. So, thanks. I'm going to, yeah, questions. Yeah, back there. Yep. Yes. It's not. No. Yep. JSON is JSON. It doesn't care if you're Linux, Mac, or Windows. It all transfers. Yep. So if you, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi and you install it on a Windows machine and then you get a Raspberry Pi later, you just export those flows, put them into your Raspberry Pi, 
make sure you install all the custom nodes, right? So let's say you install, you have to install, I don't know, something like the flex node, for example. You gotta install the flex node on your palette, on your Raspberry Pi, but then, yeah, all that configuration comes over. You gotta, so is, is, is node red the same as uh, on the system? No, no, well, it's, it's the same thing, but Home Assistant is more geared towards turning your lights on and off, right? That's what Node Red, if you go out and take a look, do a YouTube search on Node Red, people are doing process automation for it. People are, are you know, doing a bunch of different things with Node Red. I think Home Assistant is more towards home stuff, right? We have just adopted it to, to, to ham radio, but it does, essentially does the same thing, right? It turns things on and off, it gets values, it displays things in that dashboard. I'm assuming that's what Home Assistant does too, right? You can integrate this into Google and Alexa and all those things. Yeah. No, it, it's probably because I did this presentation a year ago and probably haven't updated that list. So what I would suggest is if you've got a radio or an amplifier that you want a flow for that it doesn't, it's not on the group's I.O., I bet you somebody that is in the group's I.O. has probably created that flow but hasn't published it. If also, if you're willing to work with Dave or Alan or Ron or one of those guys that have more time than I do, I bet you anything that they probably have something similar. You know, they might not have an uh, FTX DX10 or something, but they might have an uh, 891. They might be able to develop a flow for an 891, and then you can kind of go from there and port it over to your, your Yesu. Yeah, yeah. It, typically, us as hams, we don't take a look at the documentation on what's coming act, actually out of the USB port. You can, you can take a look at it, and then you take it into Node Red, right? And you, yep. The, so the, no, you don't plug the Stream Deck directly into the Raspberry Pi. You plug it into your computer, and it talks to the Raspberry Pi. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, on my Flex, it's automatic. It's through the Flex software. Y yeah, yeah. What, whatever, like, you know, I think ICOM has got a remote system now. Um, they, they use a third party piece of software to get that codec. Not yet. Somebody is working on it though. Yeah. All right, anything else? All right, very good. Thanks everyone, appreciate it, uh, thank you.